Hey, this is Paul, and today we're gonna to do a farm tour. I grow over 300 varieties of dragon fruit, so strap in and let's share some of these amazing plants. So let's start down here. Down here, I have some of my own seedlings, and this one is actually an Asunta II seedling that I got from my friend James. And I'm growing four in the series, and they're all very different. And I'll show you one in a bit. I think it's variegated, so I'm really excited. Now this one's very vigorous, I degrafted it. And I also have another seedling here I'm evaluating that, that's a Maria Fusia seedling. So I have two seedlings in here and this pot's special because Vermistera gave us uh, the product in here and it's 50% worm castings and 50% chunky coconut core, that's it. So two ingredients in this potting soil, it's been over a year and you can see these plants are really happy. You should probably explain what variegated means. Oh, variegated is where it's uh, actually, it's not good in the plant world because it lacks chlorophyll, and so that's where the plants are very yellow. So we have one right down there, I'll show you in a few minutes, that is very interesting, so it's very yellowish. And there's a few different varieties, there's an, oh, a variegated undatus, and a few others out there, a wor lime worth they call it, and the branches are super yellow, or they're marbled with green and yellow. Really, really pretty, although it's not a trait that you really want, unless it's more ornamental, not for like commercial purposes, but very pretty. Now this one here is Orahona XJ8, a seedling I'm evaluating. I grew eight of them, and I think I took out one or two, but this one's very vigorous. And I actually gave a piece of the plant material a few years ago to my friend Peps, a trusted grower, and he actually got the fruit before me, which is awesome. I'm happy he did, he enjoyed it. It was a, a dark red, a dark magenta color. So really interesting, he said it was a, a keeper. So he enjoyed it and we really believe that this is an improve, improvement over the parent plant because that's what you need to do with hybrids. And Orahona is notorious for kind of rotting and it's a bit sensitive, especially cold sensitive in my experience. So this one grows 100 times better and it sat out here all last winter in the cold weather and it's just topping the trellis, doing great. So I don't recommend it, but I am growing two varieties per pot because we have so many varieties. Ideally, you stick one variety per pot so you don't get them confused, unless you're just enjoying the fruit. But if you do grow different varieties in the same pot, I recommend growing very different ones. You can see this is an Ocamponus, very different traits than this Polyrhizus hybrid. But ideally, again, I would prefer to do one variety per pot if I could, but it's just not economically feasible for me at this time. Now this one is really special to me. This was Paul Thompson's Ocamponus, and I got it from my friend, the late Leo Manuel, and it's actually finally fruiting here, or flowering for the first time. So it's got its first bud. Ocamponus tend to be kind of low producers for fruit, but they're very, very hardy plants, as you can see, and very spiny, and not my favorite to eat, personally. Now this one is another plant. This is a Guatemalan, and it was a mislabeled one from my friend Leo, and the fruit's delicious but it, it's a mislabeled plant, so that's a no ID. Over here, I'm growing, let's see, a few different Cosmic Charlies. So I have Leo Manuel's Cosmic Charlie, I have Spicy Exotics Cosmic Charlie, and I also have, on this side, let's see, a, another one from Matt's Landscape. So this is just my Cosmic Charlie po plot, or pot, I should say, and this is 2S, Paul Thompson's 2S was renamed Cosmic Charlie. It's a delicious fruit. Now here is Tony Pachenko's TP66, a pink fleshed variety, grows really well. And on, in sharing with it, there's an Ocamponus in here, and I believe this one is my white flower Ocamponus. And it hasn't produced yet, but it's been really, really growing out really well, no problems. And this one is, is shorter spines and much different than the spinier Ocamponus. Ocamponus that you saw. So hopefully this one will taste good. The, the fruit tends to be a bit more dense, a bit more like a sweet beet in my opinion, uh, but if you freeze it, it tastes like sorbet. This one is probably the prettiest Ocamponus in the collection. This is Kennerson's Ocamponus, and it grows out really, really red. I haven't had a fruit yet, but you can see it gets really large and it's really vigorous. Well, this one came from our friend Robert Beltran. So hopefully you saw Eden East, that was a farm tour, and he actually knew Kennerson and he, he brought this up from Mexico. So it's a, it's a rare one. It's really different than the other O. Camponis. Really pretty plant. And on this side, I have the original 1S, which is Paul Thompson's Physical Graffiti. So this is what I got from Leo Manuel and I'm excited to see, well, is this 1S gonna grow the same as Physical Graffiti? 
And so far it's topped the trellis. And if you look over here, check this out, it's a really old plant. So you can see that these came from Leo Manuel and he got them from his friend Paul Thompson. And Leo Manuel actually wrote Paul Thompson's book. They collaborated on it. So I'm excited to see if this one hopefully will fruit this season. But you can see it's really dark green, really vigorous, really happy. Over here we have the Elk Creek Physical Graffiti, the Elk Creek PG. So I'm evaluating, is that the same as 1S? I also have Rosa in here. And I thought I had Leo's Physical Graffiti as well. So Leo Manuel had 1S and he had a Physical Graffiti. So I'm evaluating to see are these all the same. So far they look very similar. This one is probably one of my favorite. I think it's great for commercial purposes, but they're not all the same. This is Donovan's Laverne Red. So Laverne Red, there's different ones, but this one is, came from Donovan Vasta, and he gave it to me in 2019. It grows a fruit up to three pounds, so really large fruit. You can see it does abort some buds. We, I think this is related to that heavy rainstorm we had because I've lost a lot of buds this week. Now on this side, come look at this one. This one's really pretty. This is the Thai Royal Blood Dragon. So I have the Thai Royal Blood Dragon in here. It's first flower bud right there. And then it's got a really nice flush coming in here. So I've never eaten this one. It's a really dark red flesh. My friend Peps has had it. He likes it. And I'm excited to see how it does. It's actually not very cold tolerant though. This one has some problems in the winter. Now, I should mention these guys, are, I'm not gonna go into detail, but you can see that Leo Manuel had quite a few of his Hylos, uh, Selenoceris megalanthus crossed with his Hyloceris costarosensis. And uh, he has so many pots, I have some unknowns here, but he, I had them down to QRS. So around 20 pots, I have some in the trellises. And look at this, I haven't even looked at these for a while, and it's got some flower buds. But not all of Leo's dragons and these hybrids are the same. There are very, very, some very unique ones. So what I am doing is protecting them with this burlap and then they get some afternoon shade, shade from my neighbor's fig tree. And they're really bouncing back. They were really sick last year, but they're doing great now. So I've learned last year that moving really old plants, they stress out and they think they're dying. So they'll kick in and uh, do a huge flush of flower buds. And if you look in here, look at how unique this one is. It's very different from the others. And believe it or not, these plants, Scott, they were hybridized in 2005. Oh, wow. So all of these were labeled 11-2005. And so I'm going to evaluate the best one. And before Leo Manuel passed, he told me what he wanted done with these and how I should name them. So I'm going to absolutely pick maybe the best two out of this series and share those in the future. So, and that's just part of them. I have more. You'll see them. Now this one is prolific. Hopefully you got to see. This is what I called a mega bloom. And this is Mr. Wu. And Mr. Wu has about 30 fruit that's set. And if you look here, I'm actually experimenting. I'll tell you about it soon. I'm experimenting with a foliar spray that's actually a fertilizer, and I'm using it to kill aphids. We're having a really bad aphid problem this season. So I sprayed that this morning, and I'm going to see how it works. We'll, we'll tell you that more about that in the future. But that one's Mr. Wu, and I also have a hidden uh, Ocamponus albino in here, if you see it. And I believe it set fruit here. I had a flower here the other day. And this one's a little bit more cold sensitive than the other Ocamponus. It rotted quite a bit, but it's bouncing back and it set fruit on the stem. Now here is an unknown one. I've uh, traveled and, and got to enjoy my friend's farm at Elk Creek Dragon Fruit. And I have several no IDs from there that I found. And this one is a prolific plant, really heavy producer. I haven't shared it yet. Uh, it's very similar to what I would call Maria Fusia, but it does get a little bit of pathogens. So that's a drawback, but you can see it's just prolific. It has so many flushes. It's getting flower buds on its stem, as you can see here. And then I also have this really rare, uh, not dragon fruit, but it's a pitaya, I believe. And this came from Tulum, Mexico. So we'll see what happens with that little guy. Here we have Gray Panama, which is another Ocamponus. It's definitely unique and it's doing well. It did set fruit here. And I also have Maki Super here as well, which is not my favorite variety. I may pull this one, but it's getting a nice flush. Now, check this out. I want to show you this. Hopefully we can see it. I, 
I actually, this one had stem rot really bad and the stem is actually doesn't even function anymore. And what Gray Panama did is it shot out roots through the burlap and now it's growing great and it even set fruit. So some people might say, hey, cut this, but on a really mature plant, you could just leave it and it will shoot out roots that will penetrate into the soil. So I find that really interesting. I just left that all winter, it was almost dead. I scraped off all the rot and now it's got huge roots shooting out of it. Nice. Yeah. So sometimes you just gotta let them be, especially if they have a lot of, of carbohydrates stored. It's a really big cutting, should do fine. Now this one here is one from Mexico. I got it from my friend Peps and his, his father, his father actually grows this. It's a, an andatus that's very, very vigorous. And so I haven't shared this yet, but you can see it's really put on a nice flush. And look at these flower buds. They're very unique compared to the other undatus that I grow. They're very bulbous. Hopefully you can see that. There we go. Yeah, shadow's a little. So really pretty flower factor. buds. And you can see it's coming out with another flush. And then this is my very, very special plant here. This is an Asunta two seedling, that sister seedling I showed you. And this is the one I believe is variegated. Oh, because of the yellowing? Yep, so see the yellowing? And then it starts green. And I've done some videos on this, but the more I evaluate it, the more I believe it's variegated. I took a cutting, it's up there in the hothouse and it's yellow and variegated as well. Now here's the same plant from the same branch and you can see this one's not variegated. So these are the exact same plant, same DNA. And if you look really carefully, you can look at the marbling here. So I've had a few more people look at this and more and more of us think that this is definitely variegated. And you can see this is the same plant and same branches, same seedling, but non-variegated with variegated. So really interesting growth. It's been doing this for over two years now. So if you really follow our channel, you've seen us when I grafted this and it's been doing these weird traits for over two years. I'm really excited to see what happens. So if this is actually a purple flower, variegated purple flower, I think that would be really cool. So we'll see what happens. Now over here, we have some more dragons and this one's really special. And on this side, you can see it's Trisha crossed with Hylocerius and Datus. I set two fruit and this one came from Edgar Valdivia's collection, really old. I don't believe his plant survived. So Leo Manuel had this and you could see it wasn't doing so well in shade. So I brought it down here and moved it and kicked it into full sun and it just bounced back. And I would definitely think it's got some unique traits. You could see, I think the Undatus kind of took over more than the Trisha DNA. So it's a really unique plant. I'm really excited to see what this fruit's gonna taste like. So Undatus and Ocamponus. And on this side, I have something else beautiful here. This is a no, no ID Guatemalan from my friend Peps. And it's been really prolific. It's similar to American Beauty and it's doing really well. So just a no ID Guatemalan. And I really like Guatemalan varieties. This is San Ignacio, probably my favorite of the series besides Caslau. So it's similar to Lisa, Sabra, and more. But this one tends to do really well. It blooms a little later. So they get started a little later, but they will also have fruit later in the season. So a really delicious red flesh variety. That's San Ignacio. And then on this side is Leo's Connie Meyer. So Leo had a really old Connie Meyer. You can see how old it is down here at the stem. Oh yeah. Really, it's got a lot of barking. Oh huh? yeah, so it's an old plant doing really well. Set lots of fruit, and it really bounced back. And it's growing in full sun, so it's actually really happy in full sun. Now this one I may pull this season. A lot of growers are actually talking about pulling Trisha, and Trisha's really spiny, and Trisha tastes okay. It's really dense flesh. It's not my favorite variety, um, and El Grullo is the parent. So Edgar Valdivia hybridized El Grullo with an Andatus, I believe, to make Trisha really early on. It's a shy bloomer, it's really spiny, it gets really large, and it's, it's a really pretty flower, but definitely not my favorite to eat. Basically, it's kind of dangerous, and it's not that good, so it's kind of not worth and it. And it's right? a low producer. I mean, you can see this is a very large plant. I have four. I have tissue cultured plant, I have it from Elk Creek, and I have it from Wallace Ranch, and it's all the same, and they all are really don't put out too many flowers. Does it stress in the winter, too, from the cold? Or no, this one's That's overall really hardy. It's just really, 
it, it does yellow in the sun because it gets so thick. It's just um, blah, right? It's yeah, just, it's just it's just okay. So yeah. if you grow live in the desert and you really like uh, antioxidant fruits because the red flesh, it's a red flesh variety, is really good for you. Um, and, and, and like smoothies. I said, some people, I bring this fruit and this is their favorite one. So right. everybody has different like, tastes. It tastes like beets a little bit, right? It's a sweet beet. The thing I don't like it, it's really dense. It's a dense mm. texture and I prefer the more melony, right. kind of watery fruit. Like something like this. This one's much different. This is Pink Panther. So this is a Selenicerius cetaceous, they call it. And it's a heavy producer. This is Pink Panther. I got it from Richard Lee at Grafting Dragon Fruit. And I also have one from Leo Manuel. Is Pink Panther one of the ones that are like sugar dragon? Yeah, it's similar yeah. to sugar dragon. The fruit's small, but it's a little bit more pink than magenta. It's a lighter colored flesh. How and is the flavor? As far uh, as they good? all taste really pretty much the same. But personally, I like Neon the most because it has the least amount of earthiness at the finish. I feel like I get the soapiness. In the I call it soapiness, yeah. but some people say earthy. Yeah. But yeah, it's a little bit of a soapy finish and not so bad on Pink Panther. Okay. But I generally like them and it's not, it, it depends on the fruit. Sometimes it's a little soapy, sometimes it's not. Now this one is a really old Shana. I also have Shana in there. And I got this one from Leo Manuel. It's a Guatemalan and it's, it prefers a bit more shade. It's kind of sensitive, so. I wouldn't say it's the number one Guatemalan to grow. There's several, but this one, it's a good one. So Shana. Now here is a really, really big Kathy Von Arum. And I have it from a few sources. I have it from uh, Ricardo and Gilbert and Spicy Exotics. It's got a lot of, of fruit on it this season. But out of the three sisters, Connie Meyer, Kathy Von Arum, and Bruni, this one's the most sensitive to me. So it tends to get a lot of rot in the heat and then it's the least cold sensitive. And you can even see this one, I've cut off many branches, but here's what, kind of what happens. It just kind of rots when it gets around 100. And so if you look here on this branch, rotten. So I, 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 it's not my favorite of the three, but I'm excited to see how it tastes this season. I haven't eaten it. Now this one here is really special to me because it's really being productive and they call it Pine Island Purple. I found it in Leo Manuel's collection. It could be, it's probably one of Paul Thompson's hybrids. It could be Purple Haze, I'm not sure yet. I'm evaluating it, but you could see it's doing really well. And it does have some slightly unique shaped flowers. So it could even be a seedling. And I'm really interested to see how this one plays out. Pine Island Purple. This one is the Black Dragon, the original Black Dragon. And it's a Selenocerius grandiflorus crossed with a Hylocerius ocamponis. And we actually picked two fruit, and this one's the third one. I'm leaving it on longer to see if it gets darker in color and to see if it improves the flavor or unimproves the flavor. Now this one does have spines that do not brush off. So be oh, careful really? with it. They don't brush off easily, and this one's really spiny. On this side I have Danny's Pride of Fallbrook. And this is the one that I believe is the true Pride of Fallbrook. And what it is, is it looks like a Nicaraguan type variety, but it produces a Guatemalan looking fruit. It's really good, it's a magenta fruit, really unique plant. And this one came out of Nicaragua. So Elk Creek grew it for a while, they got it from Romero Lobo, if the story is accurate. And so this one actually should probably be called the Pride of Nicaragua, if you think about it. But really good plant, the Pride of Fallbrook. Now here we have Leo's Selenicerius cetaceous, which is similar to Sugar Dragon as well. They say it's a little sweeter, and then it does get spines on the fruit. Look See at it? all those ants. Yeah, I'm having aphid problems. So I'm spraying them, and these ants are mad. But you can see there's spines on the fruit, so that's a little bit different, but it will be kind of similar to Sugar Dragon. They say that this one's really, really sweet. Now I also have an Asunta 2, and this one is an old mother plant that came from Elk Creek Dragon Fruit, and I actually cut and pulled the whole mother plant. I bought it from my friend Linda, and so this is her original Asunta. Now she called it Asunta, but people that grew it out called it Asunta 2. So we know that Edgar Valdivia grew a lot of seedlings, so this one may be a version of Asunta 2, we're not quite sure, but either way, it's a special, really sweet plant and this one is where I got the breeding program for the variegated one and the other ones I've showed you. So believe it or not, this is the mother of this variegated plant here. So I like to keep them close so I can evaluate them. Now this one here is my favorite white flesh fruit. So if you like Undatus, this is my favorite. This is K1 and I got it from Spicy Exotics. Really nice, vigorous growth, big fruit, and it doesn't break down in the heat. 
And so I, this is my favorite undatus. I'm actually using it to breed. I have some seedlings with it. K1 undatus. Why do you like it more than the others? Uh, it's a denser texture. The fruit doesn't break down when it gets hot. It's really pretty. And it's just a different compared to the other undatus I've eaten. And I, I just really like it. It's a beautiful fruit. So we've done a review on it. Hopefully you could watch it. Now here is Edgar, and they say that this one is the same as Red ES1, and so far I would agree to that. You can see it's got some a flush on the stem here, and it's a red fleshed one. What I think happened is uh, Red ES1 was sent to three Lucky Mountains, and they renamed it. So this one they call Edgar. Here is a, un, uh, this is Voodoo Child actually, so I have Voodoo Child from Spicy Exotics and from UC Irvine, the UCNR. And you can see it's been really, really productive this season. I just harvested about 30 fruit off of it. Do you think they look the same from those two sources? Um, so far, yeah, but I'm not getting that single spine on the fruit. I've only gotten one on all of these. So I've, I, I'm not sure about the Voodoo Child thing. This one tastes, I thought I could figure it out, but I'm actually more confused now than ever. So would they say the Voodoo Child has a single spine? Uh, on the fruit, some people have that. And then also, I think some people maybe have 7S as Voodoo Child, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but they taste so similar. So Voodoo Child, Sugar Dragon, I can't really detect much of a difference at this time. Maybe in another season or as I eat more fruit, I'll know. Uh, on this side is a really cool one. This is that one they call Ocamponus poblano. So it's another Ocamponus crossed with an undatus, and it looks very much like an undatus, which is white flesh. Hasn't fruited for me. This one people say is really good. <coughs> Excuse Bless me. you. Now, here's one that I got from Fallbrook. It, it was labeled 8S, so it's a sugar dragon, so I just call it Fallbrook 8S. And then here's another one I really like. It hasn't fruited for me, but it's been growing well, and it's called Total Eclipse. And a few people found it long ago at Elk Creek Dragon Fruit, and I found the label on it two years ago. It's topping the trellis, so hopefully this one will taste as good as people say it does. This is Total Eclipse. I like the name, too. Now here's Florida Red Sweet. I have it from my friend Danny, and I also have Leo Manuals. And I had a nice conversation with Leo about this plant before he passed away, and he remembered that Paul Thompson grew this one, Florida Red Sweet, and they believed it was really close to G2. So he, it's a really old plant. I have one fruit on it, so we'll see how it tastes. Let's see that fruit. But I re just remember that Leo was really clear that day, and he said Paul Thompson grew Florida Red Sweet, and it's not Florida Sweet Red, it's Florida Red Sweet. And he had a giant plant, so we cut it out and moved it, and it's bouncing back. And then this one I got from Oceanside Dragon Fruit. I haven't shared it yet, and this one is an Isis seedling that he let me have. And he grew it out, he got a fruit in one year, but the fruit is not yellow-skinned, because Isis is a yellow-skinned undatus, but this one ended up being really sweet and red-skinned. So I'm excited to see how it does. It really took off this season, especially with our new fertilizing program. So hopefully next season I'll get a fruit off of it, or maybe later this year. Now this one is Larry Dodson Cell Fertile. It's from my friend Leo Manuel, and I did talk to Larry Dodson, and he said he got, if he remembers correctly, he got this plant from Flores Penton, Guatemala. But it doesn't look like a Guatemalan variety. It looks more like an undatus to me, so rather spiny. And it keeps wanting to grow growth down at the bottom, so I've pruned off hundreds of branches and finally forced it to top the trellis. Seems really old, huh? It is really old. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Leo Manuel really liked this one. So he said it was good, so I can't wait to try it. Over here is Edgar's baby. And this one is an Asunta seedling, I think, but with white a white flower and it's really delicious. One of my favorite of the Asuntas is Edgar's Baby. And on this side I have uh, one that is from Don Burnett and it was labeled as something really interesting. Here, check this out. So Don Burnett's Purple Flesh Self-Fertile Guatemalan from Taiwan. So I asked around and somebody was nice enough to find out that he actually got this off of eBay. So we'll see what happens. I've eaten a fruit off of it. It was good, really good Guatemalan but nothing more amazing than maybe an American beauty. But we'll see what happens as this plant matures. Over here I have Jim Neitzel, or it's just called Neitzel, and this one is another really good undatus I like. It definitely tastes really unique, and I like it almost as much as that K1. So Neitzel, really good variety. 
uh, sharing the trellis here is, which one is this? This is Santa Barbara Red. And this one came from Leo Manuel's collection. It was almost dead, it's bouncing back, and I haven't had fruit off of it yet, but it's similar to American Beauty. I'm having some problems. It must be really sweet because the ants like to eat the new branches. See that? So I sprayed it with some uh, foliar spray and it looks like they did not like it. This one here is Nicaraguan Red. Really great Guatemalan. The skin's a little thin. And look at that, here's a ripe fruit so you can see it. I'll eat this later today. So Nicaraguan Red, another magenta-fleshed Guatemalan, delicious fruit. I got this from Spicy Exotics. You can see it's really large. It's been doing great. And sharing its trellis is one of Leo's Megalanthus Costarocensis hybrids. This is his pot A. And so I have a few that I'm evaluating, and this one I threw in the pot. It was really large, as you can see, and it's doing great. I ate a fruit off of it last season. It was pretty good. So we'll see, I just, I, it needs to grow out more before I can give it a proper evaluation. But that one's pretty. All right, let's come around the bamboo here. And now we have some exciting things. So we have Country Roads, which is top of the trellis. It gets really thick, but it does get burned in the heat because it's so large. So it kind of had some damage in the heat wave, but it put on some flushes. It also has aborted some of the fruit. So this one, I haven't eaten it yet. I'm really hoping I get to try it this season. Now I also have two Pelora seedlings here. So I actually have a Pelora cl clone graft. You can see I grafted this from a store-bought fruit and it was successful and now it's growing and topping the trellis. And then I grew a seedling and grafted that a few years ago and I have fruit, two fruit here. So my first Pelora seedling fruit. So I'm really excited to try those. They're gonna take some quite a long time to ripen. They can take up to six months, believe it or not. And that's a seedling. So Country Road and two Peloras. This one is Maria Fusia. Hopefully you've seen us do this review. People are really enjoying this fruit. And this is a plant that I found at Elk Creek Dragon Fruit. And you can see it's a really nice, large magenta fruit, lots of waves, really healthy plant. I like it a lot. This is one of my favorite varieties to eat. I absolutely love it. It is self-sterile though, so you have to cross-pollinate it. Now here is Kaslau. Hopefully you saw our video on this. We actually moved this from Danny, our friend Danny's house. Uh, Scott helped, remember that, Scott? Yep, and how, to make it, how to move a big dragon fruit, right? Yep, yep, this one was really large. We actually had a, our friend also bring a trailer and help move it as well. And it's putting on a really nice flush here. So this is a red flesh variety. This is probably my favorite of the red flesh. It's similar to Lisa and Sabra and San Ignacio, but this one I just like a little more. Now over here, is Jade Red. This one's from Australia. Absolutely probably one of the prettiest purple flowers in my opinion. Really heavy producer, it grows really well, and the fruit tastes like a Guatemalan. So it's not like an Asunta, even though the flower looks like an Asunta, it tastes much more like a Guatemalan. And then here is my favorite polyrhizus. Look at how aggressive this thing is and how much fruit I have. I just ate one off of it. And this one is from a rare fruit grower called Jack Skeels, who has passed away sadly. So this one I call Skeels. And I found this at my friend, uh, Leo Manuel's house. So Jack Skeels. All right, let's come back here. We have a lot more. Thanks for sticking with us. This is a Haley's Comet from Wallace Ranch. And this one was my favorite fruit that I ate last year. So I had to talk to Neva. I, I got some cuttings from her. And this one is actually a cool experiment because I'm growing in 100% sand. Oh yeah. And so far it's been about 60 days now. And you can see, I don't see any problem with vigorous growth, it's really healthy. And I'm top dressing it with fertilizer. And then on this side I actually have an Amarilla Mexicana. So two varieties growing in 100% sand. So far it's been going well. This one is Danny's Double D I call it so far. It's a seedling I believe of Danny's. He said it was a physical graffiti seedling. It hasn't fruited for me yet. It's just been here, I haven't shared it. But right now I just have it as Danny's Dragon. And on this side is a really delicious fruit. Hopefully you've had this one. This is Florida Sweet. It's a pink fleshed variety. And I got this from a friend in Puerto Rico. And you can see it's really unique. So the growth is unique. 
The flowers are unique and it's a really light pink, delicious, delicate fruit. Uh, I did have some problems growing this out at first. The ants were eating a lot of the branches as you can see, but now it's really put on it a lot of flushes. This thing is a, a really heavy producer for, for the plant material. I mean, I got several fruit off of it this year. It just had a huge flush, but it aborted a bunch of buds, but I like this one a lot. Florida sweet. Here's my Diego's Desert King seedling, which I got from Richard Lee at Grafting Dragon Fruit and it's very vigorous. I actually filled the whole pot with this. I removed my uh, Columbiana, my yellow flesh one, because it just didn't do as well. And if you can tell, I think I need to actually give this a little more sunlight. So I'm gonna cut out some of the bamboo when I can because it's got a lot of vigorous growth here, but no flower buds yet. Although I think I'm seeing one or two here start to form. So this one, last year I got, oh yeah, there's a bunch of flower buds that's budding now. So I did fertilize last week. Now, what I think is so special about this one is the fruit that I ate. It was on the branch for like six or seven months. And I did a review in March on the fruit and it was delicious. So this is one of the few varieties that can survive our winters with ripe fruit. So Diego's Desert King Seedling. This one is a no ID, I call it Del Riego. It came from my next door neighbor and his, it's on a street in Encinitas. And it, to me, it's, it's better than American Beauty. So we've, we've compared them again and again with our family and friends and everybody always likes this one. Anytime I've let somebody try this fruit, they, they walked away with a cutting and they said, I want this plant. How large is it? Uh, it gets, it's very similar to American Beauty. I would say the skin's a little bit more like a dark reddish, so it looks a little different, uh, but it does better in the winter and it's really, really a great plant. It's been really hardy, no problems with cold or heat. You can see it does get a bit of shade here and it always produces a little later than American Beauty. So I call this No ID Del Riego. And I've shared a lot of cuttings of it because I really think that's a delicious fruit. Now on this one here is a Selenoceris cetaceous. It, somebody said it's a white fl fleshed one because there's supposedly a white fleshed one. I'm getting the first flush on it. And you can see it's a really nice flush over here. Look at this. So hopefully, I'll, I'm not sure if it's gonna be the same. I actually have four of these Selenoceris cetaceous, and there is supposedly a white fleshed one, which is what I'm looking for. And on this side, I have Fullerton, which we got at Laguna, uh, I'm sorry, with Gary Matsu Mat Matsuoka's nursery. And you can see here that it has fruit. So this one is another one, I believe, from Tony Pachanko, very similar to American Beauty. This one's called Fullerton. And it's very, it does, it got a little bit damaged over the winter, but it's been really, really an aggressive grower so far. So it's a nice Guatemalan variety. Okay, I did skip one on this row, so let me show you that really quick. Actually, no, I skipped a few. So here is another one. This is Elk Creek Unknown Number One. And this one, I found at Elk Creek, and it's really aggressive. It puts on huge flushes. And if you come over here, Scott, you can see what I like so much about this plant. It makes these really long bracts on the fruit. See them? Oh, yeah. And it's really unique shape. Now, the problem with this one is it has more undatus traits, so it's a really light magenta fruit, and it breaks down in the heat. So I think this one needs to grow in a little less sunlight. You can see it gets a little damaged. So this one is not as sun tolerant as other varieties, but you can see it's just a prolific bloomer. And I really like this fruit. It's Brixton about 19, 20, and it's uh, got another flush here. It's really aggressive. It's a great plant. I actually gave that to uh, Sun Dragon to try out, so I wanted to see if they like it. Now here's a few of my hybrids. This is another Maria Fusia seedling. It's growing really thick, really healthy, and I haven't shared this with anyone. We'll see how it does, but I really like this hybrid. The seedling is probably one of my favorite that I've grown so far. I mean, look at how beautiful it is. I just hope it's a good fruit. And on this side is one that's really special to me. I'm gonna, if it tastes good, I'm gonna name it uh, the Wallace Ranch Tribute. And this is actually the Wallace Ranch Hybrid, a seedling from it that I had a, seed, a few seeds in my pocket when we got to taste the fruit and they sprouted and that's the story with this plant. So we'll see what happens. I have not shared that one with anyone. So that's a Wallace Ranch Hybrid seedling that I call the Wallace Ranch Tribute. Now this one I got from a neighbor in the community and it's an unknown white flesh and I just stuck it behind this bamboo. This is actually a dragon bamboo, the world's tallest bamboo. Second tallest, some people say. But it's doing really well. I just wanted to see how it would do in, in this much shade and it actually is starting to bud. 
So we'll see what happens with this one. I, I may not keep it, but it's just hanging around. This is Alice Snow, which I got from Leo Manuel, and that was his friend. It's a white flesh Dundatus. Gets a lot of shade here. I'm gonna let it grow on this wall. Now, this is our elevated trellis design that we did a while back, and it's evolved and changed a few times, and now I have Leo Manuel's uh, Selenocerus megalanthus uh, crossed with Costrocensis. This is seedling B, or pot B, I should say. I have uh, this one is his pink condor, which is a really delicious one. This is seedling E, which to me is the most unique of his whole series. The flower buds look unique, and look at those branches and the coating. I really like this one. So I have not gotten fruit off of it, but it had flower buds that aborted last season. But really, really pretty plant. Here is Selenocerus spinulosus, all the fruit aborted off of it. But it's really happy here, and it makes the smallest little flowers I've ever seen. Monkey tail cactus, here's the Selenocerus, uh, the, the queen of the night here. This is Selenocerus patrancis. Patrancis, I said it wrong. Is that a budding flower? I think yeah, it's, it's really hairy and they actually don't taste that good. So we have that. I have a sugar dragon seedling in here as well. I call it sugar dragon X. I have the lost Dutchman. I have an unknown Laverne purple in here, a grandiflorus, and so many other things in here. Lots of Selenocerus as well. Is that the Dutchman? This right is here? lost Dutchman. Check out the fruit. It's looking oh, pretty yeah. cool. Really spiny, really small. Yeah, and cool. then I have some other things here that are just growing out. This one's Hoang Red over here. And it's starting to bud. And then I also have a really special one here called Thanos, which is from Xavier in Puerto Rico. And it, I put it here, the ants were eating it, but now it's got some growth. So this one is really rare, Thanos. Over here now we have Selenocerius grandiflorus right here. And then thanks to Scott, he recommended that Red Leonardo and Red Jaina and Trinidad get more shade. So I moved them here and they are a million times happier. So I've learned that polyrhizus and some of these just prefer more shade and they're really bouncing back. Also have Selenocerus hamatis, hamatis. And then last weekend I got to meet the Gray Martin who's one of my heroes and he gave me some plants and this is his opal. So I have two plants that are opal. So I'm excited to grow these and, and plant them. Now we also have Selenocerus Honduras, the Hunter and Moon Torch. We have here Hylocerus Stenopterus, which is the purple flower, the parent of Connie Meyer and many others, Asunta. We have Lee Emanuel's G2 here, which is doing pretty well, really old plants. We have Red Jaina. We have this really weird white flesh seedling from the botanical gardens that my friend gave me. It's called an unknown white cross with PG. It's actually the hardest plant I'm growing, so it needed more shade, and now it's doing well here. Uh, look at that, G2 has a flower bud. Now, speaking of G2, I actually have three different plants about that. I'll show you in a second. But before we get to that, we have the purple flower Ocamponus. It's closing up. You can see the bees are enjoying it. Really beautiful bloom. Here's a fruit on it that's set. And again, Ocamponus, I've never had this. this. These are some of the trendier, more popular ones now. It's putting on nice flesh. This purple flower one's probably my favorite of those new ones that came from Mexico in the past few years. And it's got another bud there. This one is Robles Red, which I got from Wallace Ranch. And the most special one to me is right here. This one is actually from the original mother plant. So I, uh, they were nice enough at Wallace Ranch when we toured, they showed me the original mother plant. I said, may I have a cutting? So I have it. So this is from the first Robles Red mother plant. Uh, back there we missed a 6S, which is not flowering, so it's not too exciting. One of Paul Thompson's. This one is G2 in here, and I have, again, three sources. I have Leo Manuel's, and then two versions from Leo Manuel's friend. And he said they actually tasted a little different. He got one from Florida, and one from Leo Manuel. So just growing them out, I did notice that this G2 really has these weird shaped flower buds. I don't know if you're seeing this, but it's consistently making these kind of splits in the flower buds, see that? So I don't know if that's a special trait to this G2 or not, but that's just an observation. I also have a really rare one here. This is a highly sought after one, but it grows like garbage in our climate. And this is yellow tie, right? Or yeah, yellow tie from Spicy Exotics. It actually has a flower bud there. And it's a Megalanthus hybrid. Now over here is G1. So I have G1, G2, G3. This is G1, it's the most sensitive of the G series. 
and it's actually a parent plant of the really popular like Queen Daenerys and Connie G. So G1, and then I have an Asunta 5 Ventura on this side. So Asunta 5 Ventura. Here is my favorite of the G series. This is G3. Nice flushes, earliest to bloom, really productive plant. And this one was, was Leo Manuel's, and this was Leo Manuel's favorite of the G series. I actually have two pots of it. I like it that much. And you can see that they're all about the same age, but the G3 tends to grow the best. And so look at how old it is too. Look at this. You can see how old it is. And this oh, yeah. was Leah Manuel's. So it's really corked over, really beautiful old plant. This is a different G2. This one is the other one. I'm going to evaluate and see how it does. And it's mixed up in here with Leo Jr., one of the plants that I named from Leo Manuel's collection. And Leo crossed this, it's 7S crossed with neon. So really rare. And it actually has a fruit over here. Scott, check it out. So here's the fruit for 7S crossed with neon. The, the little tips of the, of the fruit and the flower buds are darker than its parent, which is right here, 7S. And this 7S is Paul Thompson's missing one. They said it was dyed in the frost, but not before he gave it to Sven Meriton, which is this one came from, and then Leo had it. Now, I think 7S didn't stick around because it's more of a shy producer, as you can see. Not too many flower buds. It's definitely a lighter colored flesh as well. And this is one of my top fives for sure. I absolutely love this plant. This is Laverne Pink. We call it Paul's Laverne Pink because there's different versions. This was actually a mislabeled Laverne Red I bought from, a friend gave us, and he bought it from a nursery. So really pale pink fruit. You can see it's really spiny compared to other Laverne Pinks. And it bricks us at about 24 consistently. This was absolutely delicious fruit. One of my favorite, if, especially if you like sweet flavors. Now with it is my favorite Orahona seedling. Hopefully you've seen some of the others, eight and seven, and this one's number four. And what I like about it compared to its sisters is it grows really dark red. And in the heat wave, it's dark red. It's so unique, the growth, compared to the seven other seedlings. It hasn't fruited for me yet, but it's really hopefully gonna flower this season. I'm really hoping on it. And you can see the more mature branches are really thick. Really pretty plant. So this is Orahona XJ4. Now over here, I have actually three things. I have Dark Star, I have 9S, and I have the Orange Flower Ocamponis. And look at that fruit. Really beautiful. I can't wait to try it. Really pretty plant. And I've evaluated and I consider Dark Star and 9S the same. So don't waste your money buying both. They flower at the same time. They fruit taste the same and it's really an aggressive grower. Look at that. So Dark Star, 9S, and the Purple Flower Ocamponis. Ugh. Okay, now this one is, one's a no ID. I believe it's a condor. I found it at Elk Creek Dragon Fruit, really vigorous grower. And then I also have one of Leo Manuel's uh, 7S cross with neon, a different pot. So he had four pots. So this is another one It hasn't flowered yet. What else do we have over here? We have, uh, this is 4S, and this one was, so, so far, I'm a little confused about this because it's a little different than the book indicates. The book says that it was a pale pink fruit, but this is magenta, and it's really delicious. So I'll do an in-depth review on these fruit this season and explain what I think happened to this plant. And I personally am leaning towards that Paul Thompson's book may have an error, or it could have been mislabeled. But this one is Paul Thompson's 4S from Leo Manuel. And every fruit has been delicious. Reminds me of Haley's Comet, which is one of my favorites so far. Uh, but it's not as described in the book. It's been more of a magenta flavored, magenta colored fruit. So we'll do a proper review on this and we'll go into detail about what I think happened with that one. This one is a really popular one these days. This is Cotton Candy 1-10. This is uh, one of Don Burnett's 18 seedlings he's growing out and I'm growing a few of them. This one tastes really good. I got it from Donovan Vasta who named it and you can see how prolific it is. Did get a little bit of damage in the winter as you can see up here, but it bounced back. I've taken a lot of cuttings off of it and I gave some away. I sold some for 10 bucks and, and I like this plant a lot. Really good. I mean, look at these fruit. I can't wait to eat them this season. Really large too. 
And then on this side is another one that people are saying is great. This is Esmeralda, which is from Mexico, and it's a green-skinned undatus white flesh. I set two fruit on it. It's been really an aggressive grower, vigorous plant, so Esmeralda. Over here is another really aggressive grower. We got this at, you were there, Scott. We got this from uh, Oceanside Dragon Fruit, and this was their mislabeled Kathy Von Arum. And it tastes really similar to Axe, and it's really, I would say it's more of an aggressive grower than Axe. So possibly another Asunta seedling, really beautiful plant. The fruits are, are delicious. The, the flowers are beautiful. Yeah, it really reaches for the sky. Oh yeah, and I've that. pruned off so many branches. I was, it's like, I call it an ax on steroids, in my opinion. Maggie's ax on steroids. And then this one is from Peps. This is one he calls Lamas. And it produces a, like a Guatemalan fruit. It's some really unique plant he got early on. And nothing grows like it. So I really like it. It's a delicious fruit. And it grows really well. It's just a little spiny, but great plant. Over here, I have Asunta 5 Paco, which is the official Asunta 5. I got this from Ricardo, who got it from Edgar Valdivia himself. So this came from Edgar Valdivia's collection. And another really rare one I put with it is from Edgar Valdivia, and this one's called Alora, which is a white flesh, no, it's a purple flower, but white flesh fruit. So Alora, not too many people have it. I got this from my friend Richard Renshaw. He's awesome, really great guy. Now, we gotta come back up here because we talked about Cotton Candy 110, but now we gotta talk about the sister seedlings. And so, these ones are really expensive these days. Cuttings are going for a lot of money, highly sought after, and this one is seedling 1-12. Now, Leo Manuel and Don Burnett traded uh, rare hybrids uh, several years ago, 2017, and this is how Leo Manuel acquired it, and then he passed away and I bought it. So, this one, uh, Kim Pham has, and I believe she has named it, but I'm not sure what. So that's seedling 1-12. On this side, I have Connie G, which is 1-3. I have it from Kim and from Spicy Exotics. And I bought a $100 cutting last season. It was very large atop the trellis, and you can see it's already producing uh, really nice branches. So Connie G. And on this side, I have a really unique plant from Leo Manuel, and it's Leo Manuel's Hylocerus and Datus crossed with Hylocerus costarricensis. So really aggressive grower. It ended up being a decent fruit last year, but the plant wasn't really happy, so I gave it more sun. And look at it now, so much better. Really old plant too, look at this. So this is one of Leo's seedlings. He had so many. So he is actually a really popular hybridizer that most people didn't know about. Now over here, this is seedling 1-3. And I was told that I'm the only one with it. Leo Manuel had it, and I just, I didn't know what to do, so I decided I wanted to give this one away for free. So I've given away a lot of different cuttings so people can grow this one and see what they think for themselves. So we'll see what happens. This is seedling 1-3. Looks healthy. It is. It's really healthy, top in the trellis. I actually have two pots of it. So this one is one I'm growing to uh, evaluate the fruit, and the other one I'm growing to share cuttings. Now this one here is... The last one of the series, I believe, it's uh, Queen Daenerys, which is 1-4. So Queen Daenerys, the beautiful flower, hopefully you've seen it. And so I bought this one. It's the least spiny of the series that I have. And then on this side, I have Edgar Valdivia's Red Undatus. So I'm not sure if this one got renamed Vietnamese Red, but this one I found in Leo Manuel's collection. Here's one of Leo's tags. And again, it says Red Undatus Ed Val. And then last on this row is Leo Manuel's 7S crossed with Neon Pot E. Like I said, he had four pots of it, so I have one of those in here. And then I also have his Hylocerus Undatus and G2. So he crossed G2 with Hylocerus Undatus and made this hybrid. So I haven't really shared this with many people, maybe one or two. And the fruit is delicious. It's a good one as well. Now over here we have... Uh, one I named Brenda. This is Leo Manuel's Jim Neitzel crossed with Rixford, and this is seedling B. So it makes a magenta flesh fruit. You can see it's not the same as Purple Haze. You can see it's definitely spinier, longer spines. But again, Leo Manuel copied Paul Thompson's Fortuitous Cross. So uh, the fruit was quite good last year. I had a small, a few smaller fruit, but this season we'll see how it tastes. And here's its sister. This is Peggy, which is seedling A, and this produces a pink flesh fruit like Delight. So Peggy is seedling A. Again, look at how much spinier it is than Delight. 
And Leo was great friends with Paul Thompson, and so he copied his cross. Now I also have some other pots of those seedlings here, just extra cuttings. I have an unknown one over there. And then this one is probably the oldest condor you can find. So this is Leo Manuel's condor, which he got from Edgar Valdivia, who was the first person to get those cuttings from Condor Ranch, I believe. And it produces a great, great uh, fruit that tastes a lot. It's a Guatemalan, but it, it tastes and smells a little better. And this was uh, Leonardo, his favorite at Oceanside Dragon Fruits. Uh, that was one of his favorite fruit last time we talked to him. And then this one is a really weird one. It looks a lot like Red Jaina, but this one was actually cut in Puerto Rico in the jungle. And so I call it just the Puerto Rican jungle cut. And I have no idea what it is, but it did set some fruit or some flower buds, excuse me, but they look a lot like Red Jaina. So we'll see what happens with that one. But the spines are longer, really long spines. It's pretty gnarly. Let's see those spines real quick. So see them here? So it's really spiny. So I'm interested to see what that turns out to be. Over here is Luke Vleeraker. This is a special one. Wow, look at that. It's got flower buds. I missed that. And this one is a really dark uh, Ocamponis, a really dark magenta, really pretty plant. And this came from Puerto Vallarta along the coast in Mexico. And I actually talked, I messaged Luke Vleeraker and he told me where he found it. And he gave it to Leo. On this side is actually, this one's a no idea, but this one is the sweetest Guatemalan I have, believe it or not. This one breaks at 21.5, and this one was labeled from Leo Manu's collection as Leo's eBay self-fertile. Really big fruit like a Guatemalan, but it was brixing in over almost 22. Now it was almost dead when we brought it. It flowered last year, one fruit, and then now it's coming back. So really interesting plant. I hope to, it flowers again so I could eat it. Really delicious. This one is 5S, which is Paul Thompson's 5S. They were rena uh, renamed Purple Haze by Pine Island. And I've, I've grown out some Purple Haze from different places and I removed them because I have 5S and I noticed that some grow really gr dark green. I've, I've noticed some variances. So like I, I said, I just pulled the others and I'm only keeping 5S. It's a delicious fruit, really, really vigorous grower. And inside that pot as well, I have one of Leo's hybrids and this is pot D. So he has so many of them and this is pot D. Look at how old it is. You can see it's like a tree. So I just put it in here had an extra space and it seems really happy. All right, we talked about that one. Let's head over here. Uh, head up here, Scott, we missed these, sorry. Now, this pot is really cool. I'm excited to talk about this one because this is my tribute to Paul Thompson. This is his Houghton, or Houghton, they say, which is one of the parent plants for Sugar Dragon and Rixford. Now, Rixford had been renamed by Kim. They renamed it Rix because it was the wrong one, then they named it Tropicana, but those are basically, I think, a G2 or something really similar. Now, this one, I believe, is the real Rixford, and I brought a cutting to Gray Martin, and he instantly had recognized some characteristics, so he thinks it could be Rixford. I'm really excited to see how it grows out. So this is my Paul Thompson tribute pot. Over here is Leo's Dragon. I believe Spicy Exotics has it and Leo had it. It's, it's actually a, one of his hybrids, like I said, the Slinocerius megalanthus costarocensis cross, but he named this one Leo's dragon. It has a flower bud up here. I just have it growing in the orange tree. Yeah, a nice know. little bud. Maybe we can get back there. Maybe. Hopefully you can get there. See it? Yeah, there it so is. So just having it hang out here on this lemon tree. It's doing a lot better now. I was, I was not so happy when we moved it. And then this pot are two of my hybrids. This is Paul's Laverne Pink crossed with Trisha. Hasn't flowered yet. It's been growing quite well. I'm hoping this branch produces a flower bud this season. And on this side, I have a PG seedling, a physical graffiti seedling, and I call it PGX. And it's been growing really well, really twisted branches, really interesting colored growth, but no f flowers or fruit on that one yet. Over here is uh, one from Mexico from my friend Peps, and this was a red flesh one. It hasn't fruited yet. It's growing pretty unique though, so I don't have anything else like it. And that one's from Mexico. On this side, I have Natural Mystic from Spicy Exotics. And I, I gotta say, it's not, not my favorite. I may remove it, it tastes okay. Some people really like it, 
but it's really sensitive in the cold, it rots, it seems to really attract more pests than any other plant, a lot of aphids, and it's just not my favorite. So if the fruit don't wow me this season, I'm going to remove this one. Over here, I have a GE number three, which is George Emmerich Jr.'s plants. We have 48 of them. And this one is a really weird Ocamponus. I cannot get this darn thing to flower yet. And I've had it several years. It grows really uniquely. And then it gets, in the summertime, it turns yellow and it puts on this coat. And I have it grafted and ungrafted and I cannot get this darn thing to flower. So hopefully sometime this season. And on the other side, I have one from Australia called Purple Dawn. So Purple Dawn is a hybrid. I haven't had the fruit yet. I'm just growing it out and it's a really aggressive grower. Now around this plum tree, we have George's Red, which is one of the sweetest red varieties. I had some fruit off of it. It will bricks in the 20s, George's Red. And on the other side, Baby Serato. You can see it has a lot of fruit on it. And these ones are really spiny, but they taste really good. So this one's Baby Serato. Now over here are some of George Emmerich's plants. I won't get too into them. I have 48 of them and I've repotted some of them and I'm actually kind of neglecting them. Most are in Dadis and uh, I need to spend some more time on them. But that's the problem with having this many varieties is when do I have enough time? So now let's go, do you want to go up the hill, Scott, or down? Yeah, just start All right, from the bottom. So let's go here. down here, head down here. We got some really interesting things and then we'll head back up. So here's a nice old Apuntia. I had a dragon fruit in here, a lot of dragon fruit, but I pulled it out. And I'm gonna prune this out and make another trellis again. So we'll see what happens with that. So down here is the oldest plant I have in the collection. It's from 1998 and it's Hylocerus bronxensis. This one is from H. Huntington Botanical Gardens and it's from 1998. It cost five bucks, Leo bought it. So this one, actually I tasted the fruit and it was the only fruit I had to spit out. It tasted like mold. And you can see how old this plant is. I have a few different cuttings of it. I found a similar one at Exotica to evaluate. It all looks the same. And then it has this flower bud here. What's wrong with mold? Uh, you know, if you, you like, like eating mold, you this like is your one, man. I'll give you a cutting <laughs> of it. You enjoy it, but not my favorite. Uh, this one, what do I have here? A Hylocerus venezuelis, which is a maybe mislabeled, really hard to grow. This one I got from a, a California rare fruit grower. I may give up on it. It's like two years old. Look at that. This one is uh, Ocamponus violeta. So this one came from Mexico. It grows more violet than the other Ocamponus. And it's just sitting here hanging out. And I probably should spend more time with it. These ones, uh, this one was a weird one called Leo Manuel's number one. And it's, it was all, in all of his records and it's not one S obviously. And it said not one S, it just said one. So it hasn't grown much for me. Reminds me kind of a red ES one. So I'm not sure what that is. What's this one is San Lorenzo. I got this one or is it just Lorenzo? It's not Hong Red, what's this? San Lorenzo. And I got this from Nick C. It's another Ocamponus. You can see I'm kind of neglecting the Ocamponus, I hate to say. This is the Pride of Fallbrook I got from Linda herself and it ended up being the wrong one. It was not the correct one. And this one tastes a lot like Lisa Rosa. So sadly, this one is a mistake and most people do not have the correct Pride of Fallbrook. That's why we named that one over there, Danny's Pride of Fallbrook, because it's a magenta flesh, which is what the real Pride of Fallbrook is. Now here I got, what else do I have here? This is just, this is uh, Lisa from Elk Creek, Lisa. Uh, this one came from, where did this one come from? This is Rosario from Belize, but I learned that they just imported Nicaraguan plants. It grows like horrible. This is a no ID, Sabra, some other things I'm neglecting. And then up here, is where we have some better plants and more interesting things. So right here is Lorenzo, which is different supposedly than San Lorenzo. And then here's that one, Scott, that Leonardo called watermelon. And it's never grown well for me. He said it tastes like watermelon, but you have this cutting as well, don't you? Yeah, it's doing a little better than yours, but yeah. it's still slow to grow. Yeah, I've had some, it just never and it's no taken fruit. off. No, no fruit. fruit. Yeah. Uh, this one has been really hard for me to grow. This is an Ocamponus medusa. People really uh, have been searching for this one, but it's the least cold tolerant of all the Ocamponus I grow. So it's rotted out over the winter and I had to start again. This one is an unknown Cetaceous I got from Nick. This one is Edgar Valdivia's Redius One. 
So it's a classic, and this is Edgar's seedling number one. It's a decent fruit, not my favorite. Uh, so it lost a trellis, I hate to say, but it's a decent plant. This one is another one of Leo's 7S cross with neons. This is pot C, and it was doing really poorly in a shadier environment. And so I pulled it and put it here a few weeks ago, and you can see it's got a flower bud now, branches, branches. This old plant is now having some growth, and it even put out a flower bud. So it looks like this plant just needed more sunlight. Here is one of Leo's no IDs. This one was found inside a pot and it was in the pot of his 3S Red. So I'm hoping maybe this is that punch one that nobody can find because uh, people keep talking about one called punch and we haven't found it yet. So the one we did a video on, that punch, was definitely a Cosmic Charlie, which is 2S. So I'm really hoping, could this be punch or is it just a no ID? This is Hylocerus Pruvianus, which is a white-fleshed undatus. Been slow to grow, but it's happy now and I probably should tie it up better. This one is one I called Salt's Dragon. It's GE number 20. I named it because this one is so unique. The fruit looks like white fleshed, but it's a deep red inside. It tastes pretty good. And I named it Salt's Dragon because when George Emmerich Jr. passed away, his cat was his beloved cat, Salt. It disappeared the same day and nobody ever found it. So to pay tribute to these rare fruit growers, I thought it'd be nice to name it Salt's Dragon. This one is uh, an unknown one, it's most likely Maria Rosa. I found it at Elk Creek with Danny and it's growing exactly like Elk Creek's Maria Rosa. Now this one is a pale pink self-sterile plant and it grows really dark, really short branches. It's a delicious, it's probably one of my favorite, I would almost call it white fleshed, but most people say it's pale pink, just so slightly pink. Self-sterile, delicious, big round fruit. This one is one of my favorite seedlings, it keeps flowering, but the flowers abort, it has not flowered yet. This is a PG, uh, G3 crossed with physical graffiti. So G3 crossed with physical graffiti. I didn't hybridize this, my friend, a California rare fruit grower, gave me the seedling. So I'm excited to see how it tastes. It should be really, really cool and really tasty, I hope. You can see it, I've never grafted it, and it's doing great. This is another one of Leo Manuel's G3s. This is the second trellis I have of it. He liked it so much and it's still been really productive. I've eaten several fruit off of it this season already. Now this one, I really hope it flowers this season. This is the oldest 8S that is probably known in existence. This was Leo Manuel's and he collected it from Paul Thompson himself, January 2nd, uh, sorry, January 17th, 2002. So this is from 2002, it's 21 years old, and I pulled it out, it almost died last year, and I had it up the hill in the shade and it didn't do much, and so I put it here just last week, and I'm blasting it with more sunlight and we'll see what happens. And so I have this original 8S next to Sugar Dragon and Arizona Purple and Neon and all the others to see are they the same or different. So this one's Arizona Purple. This one did get a spine on the, on the fruit, so like the voodoo child, so interesting, Arizona purple. This is Sugar Dragon from Elk Creek Farms. And they named, renamed ADES Sugar Dragon. You can see how productive it is. And then here's Danny's Sugar Dragon. He called it SD9. I do not see a difference. It's just a more possibly productive Sugar Dragon, but I have them side by side. They're very much the same. Uh, this was Leo Manuel's favorite of uh, this smaller fruit, and this one's Neon. And this one came from Leo's collection. David Archer is the person that I believe named it. Um, but you can see it's a little bit more sensitive, and it hasn't been so happy. So I'm wondering, are, is it just because it's so old? Um, it's looking a lot better now. It's got more flower buds, but it was really yellow. Or maybe it needs more sun. So right now I'm just leaving it here. I took some cuttings and I'm gonna put one in full sun to see what happens. If you look, the fruit almost looks a little bigger right now than Sugar Dragon, so we'll see. This is Kip's Red. This one is a popular Guatemalan that grows pretty quickly and you can find this at local nurseries. So they still sell it today. I believe it's San Marcos Nursery um, is who sells it, Kip's Red. This one is probably the oldest Frankie's Red in existence. As you can see, it's from Leo Manuel from 2005. And it's finally got my first flower bud here. And look at it, it's like a pine tree. Yeah, it just gets barky. So really barky, really hard to grow. It, it didn't do much last season when we moved it. 
and I kept it under this California pepper tree to really give it less sunlight. Yeah, I think and it's like And I think it's helping. Mark. And look at all this beautiful new growth. It's really happy, I've pruned off a lot, and now I finally have a flower bed. This is what some people say is one of the best tasting fruit. Self-fertile as well. This one is Bloody Mary, which has given me some problems, so I gave it more shade. It, it really rotted out last season. It had topped the trellis down the hill in full sun and then totally rotted this spring. And then this one I have moved several times. It's Hylocerus trigonosis. It's um, the one from Puerto Rico, the native. It's bicolored, two-colored fruit. And I think they named it HS chameleon. Uh, Three Lucky Mountains renamed it. But for some reason, it, it's died the past few seasons. It died back, and so I just repotted it again. And it's, it's a little sensitive in my climate, but much better in the shade. Kind of needs to find a sweet spot. Now, you may not, this one may not look like much, but this one's really special to me as well because this one is Frankie's Red Cross with Assunta. And my friend Richard Renshaw hybridized it and it's been hard for him to grow. I don't believe he's ever had a fruit. So he shipped me out this plant and I've got it in here adjusting it and I'm going to experiment to see if we can get it to grow out. But wow, what a special hybrid. Frankie's Red Cross with Assunta. Over here is the, another one of our seedlings of that um, series from that Asunta 2 cross. And this is seedling number one. Man, it's going you can on, see huh? I fertilized it with our fertilizer that we'll talk about. And it's really happy. I need to prune off all this growth. And so I put this one in more shade just to see how it does compared to the others. As you can see, it doesn't seem to mind the shade. See, we talked about Hong Red and Thanos. This one is Quangong Cell Fertile, which is a really unique plant. Um, it looks like a Guatemalan, kind of like Dark Star too, so I, I will test it for self-fertility. Um, some people online thought that this is the same as Dark Star, but maybe this, if it's really self-fertile from Quang, which we'll test, um, we'll see. But it, it reminds me of Dark Star, I do agree, but I, I see some differences. So I need to test this one for self-fertility for sure this season. It almost died last year. We moved it, if you remember, Scott. Um, it rotted out a bit and then now it's just so happy and now it's putting out some buds. But I noticed last winter this thing was not happy. We have mulch here and this is actually my long-term goal is I really want to have all the irrigation buried under this mulch so I don't have to deal with weeds. And then I have interspersed different fruit trees, rare fruit trees, mangoes, uh, pineapples, uh, some ornamentals as well, bananas. So this is a kind of a complete section as you can see. So starting off here we have Leo Manuel's Yala X. It actually has a beautiful fruit on it as you can see. Look at that, nice winter fruit. And this is a Yala seedling that Leo Manuel grew out and it produced a delicious fruit. Hopefully you've seen our review on it. And it's a really happy, healthy, unique looking plant. Next to it, it shares space with uh, Axe which is an Asunta uh, cross that Gray Martin has saved. So that's Axe, it's doing quite well. Here is Leo Manuel's original American Beauty. It's a really old plant and hopefully you saw our Weird Fruit Explorer collaboration where uh, we sent a bunch of fruit, Wallace Ranch and, and we did. And this one, this plant produced the winner. So he felt that American Beauty was the number one fruit that he tasted out of the selections we provided and this is the plant that produced it. It's an old plant. Right here we have one of my Orahona seedlings. This is seedling seven. I actually have an off-season fruit. I'm gonna evaluate it. I'm not gonna film this one. I'm just gonna eat it just to try it. Nice size. It's a nice size, but again, it's off-season. The thing I don't like about this seedling here is it does get a bit of pathogens here. You can see there's some cactus rust, things like that. So you see this here is pretty bad. But I also think that's caused because it's getting too much shade here. So I actually had to trim out my palm trees a few weeks ago trying to get more sunlight. But I'm evaluating this one carefully and I'm excited to try that fruit. So that one has a few sisters here. I'll show you in a second. This one actually really quick I should show you. This is Benoit Red. And as you can see I have it near American Beauty because some people say it's the same thing. So we have that. We have a Super Sharon here from Three Lucky Mountains that a friend gave me or we traded. So Super Sharon, we'll try that one. Over here is another Orohona seedling. It hasn't fruited yet. This is Orohona seedling number six. So the sister to the last one I showed you, I actually just have it growing under this plant. It's really healthy here. Getting a bit too much shade in this spot though. Here's a different seedling that we evaluated the fruit. This is seedling number five. 
and hopefully you see our, saw our video on that. It's a delicious fruit. And this one I grew ungrafted straight from seed. And you can see how vigorous it is. And out of all the eight ones that I've grown, this one to me grows the healthiest. It has the least pathogens. It's really vigorous, like I said, and produces these long, but beautiful branches and really delicious fruit. And its actual mother is right behind you, Scott. Here is our orahona. So this is, we grew seeds from this plant. And you might say, well, why is it so small? Well, that's because we grew it in uh, compost. It was in fox farm soil and every winter this plant would rot and it almost died last season. So I cut it, took two last cuttings and started again. So this plant at one time was a large plant that just could not take the full sun and the compost soil. It's very sensitive. So luckily its offspring are more resilient than the mother plant. Moving on here is uh, Paul Thompson's 3S, which he renamed Delight. This one's really special to me because it's Leo Manuel's and it's 3S. So it was never named as Delight. And you could actually see, look at how old this plant is. Look at that old stem. And it almost was dead when I, we got it at Leo's and I cut it back severely and look at it now. It's just gorgeous, really healthy. So Paul Thompson's 3S, he named it Delight. This one is another three. This is Don Burnett's 1-3. I have two of them. And this one I've given the name Honesty. And so it hasn't fruited yet, but I've shared it for free for several people. And my whole wish or goal, hopefully, is that this one will always be free for people to share. I thought that'd be kind of cool. So we'll see how it goes. So Don Burnett's 1-3 Honesty. I have two plants. I'm really excited to see it fruit this season. Here is Namibia orange. I've learned a lot about this plant over the years. It's actually Paul Thompson's number 40 in his book. So Namibia orange, it has an interesting story I've traced back a bit, and it actually does come from a French res restaurant that was in Namibia, and then it was brought here to California. And it's been here since the, I believe, late 80s. So a really old variety, uh, Namibia orange. Here is a really cool seedling, a Kaslau seedling I've grown out. Hopefully it will fruit this season and it's really, really healthy. So Kaslau seedling. Over here we also have Leo Manuel's Brunei, which you can see Brunei thinks it truly is spring or something. It's got epic growth here and it's mixed in with Cinnaspinus. So I have both in here. Cinnaspinus is a rather mild variety, but I really like it just because of the spineless characteristics and it tastes kind of like a mild cherry but definitely not my favorite variety to grow but a decent fruit let's see what else do we have over here we have a couple of my own hybrids just extra seedlings they're a g3 cross with pg and i actually jokingly call that one hypodermic because it makes one really long thorn if you want to see it here scott if you could see this plant is here, a unique seedling there. sure and you can see here, don't mind this mess here. I have some other George Emmerich plants I'm, I'm taking care of here. We'll talk about it another time. But you can see here, it just generally makes this one long thorn. Oh yeah. And so this is a G3 cross with physical graffiti. And so I have a whole trellis over there. It hasn't fruited yet. And I didn't know what to do with all the extra cuttings. So I have like eight cuttings in this, just growing under this beautiful Haas avocado. And like I said, we're not going to talk about some of George Emmerich Jr.'s plants I have a, in the other episodes. So just skip over those. These are in Fox Farms, and I'm changing the potting soil hopefully today. Now the last part of this section is two varieties that I'm really excited about. One looks a lot like Sugar Dragon, and it's an unknown cetaceous we found at Exotica Nursery really early on in our dragon fruit journey. In fact, hopefully, Scott, do you remember when we went in that old greenhouse? Yeah. This is the plant that we found. Oh, okay. So there's that one, and then the Sai Rong's Orange Dragon, which I've talked about before, but I'm really excited to try this beautiful fruit here. Dang, that's it's been on there monster, since man. October 9th, so three months, and hopefully it'll be ripe soon. It's just popping a few thorns here. So that's interesting. This is a Megalanthus hybrid, and it's gonna have really small seeds. It's gonna be an orange skin, white flesh inside, really sweet. So I've had, I had one fruit last season. I'm really excited to try that one this season. So this is just part of section three here. Let's go down the hill so I could show you all the new changes that we've been making since you've seen our part two video. Okay, so here's the newest section. I just built these and I'm actually kind of upcycling 
kind of reminded me of Robert, kind of inspired by Robert, one of the growers we visited. And what I did is we took, I have these old fence posts here, and all I did is I drilled holes and used some old rebar, and then I found some rebar caps so I wouldn't get hurt and I won't get hit. And I've turned these into trellises. You can see I wrapped up a bunch of burlap. So this is my kind of my, I guess my bad, I don't know, my bad child of section, my section of that I'm not gonna focus on these ones. I just, I can't kill them, but I, they're not high ranking on my flavor or I predict that they're not gonna be that good. So I have a lot of white flesh George Emmerich plants here. These are one and two, you can see. Here's a really unique Ocamponis that actually got a little damaged in the frost here. And this is the coldest part of the yard, by the way. Uh, but you can see this is one of GE's number three, and this is a really unique Ocamponis. I can't get it to fruit. I've had this thing for four years, so hopefully, uh, it lost its trellis and I'm going to keep it here to evaluate. So you can see you just keep moving down. We have a bunch of uh, dragon fruit. Some of these I actually just repotted. Here's a good example of why you shouldn't actually repot during the off season. You can see this thing's getting blasted by the sun and the cold and I'm going to lose these branches. But I knew that was going coming into it. It's going to be fine. But again, you can see here, I just have so many plants. I mean, we have hundreds of varieties and I don't have the time or the ability to trellis all of them. So this is kind of just my evaluation section. And it's a, a really far away part of the yard where I can just have it down here. It, they're gonna be sturdy. And you can see it just goes on and on. I have so many varieties. These are Enzo's, mislabeled ones from Elk Creek Dragon Fruit, San Lorenzo, George Emmerich Jr. plants. Uh, mislabeled ones. Here's some Sabra and here's the Ocamponis. So just a bunch of different ones that I've labeled really meticulously. You can see here I use metal labels on all of them and labeled the plants because I don't want them to get mixed up. So this was the incorrect Pride of Fallbrook, the one I got from actual the source, but it's the wrong one. So you can see I just have kind of a lot of the plants in their kind of timeout list here. And you can see they actually are getting kind of damaged and they're not getting the care they should, but they're gonna bounce back and do fine. So I'm just gonna continue and put all the kind of unknown, no ID plants I'm not sure of, and just continue down this whole row. So that's kind of what I'm doing this winter. And let me go show you some more changes that we're making here. So hopefully you saw this, this is part one of our tour. And notice this is where Mr. Wu was. And now that giant Mr. Wu with the mega bloom is gone. And I know it was a very productive plant, but that fruit is just okay for me. And when I, we grow so many varieties, Mr. Wu just didn't make the cut. I need the trellis space. So I pulled Mr. Wu and I replaced it with this here, something much more unique. This one here on this side is a Puerto Rican undatus from a grower named Gabriel and he grew some seedlings and this white flesh is brixing at 20 in the 20s. So I have uh, two sister seedlings. So I replaced Mr. Wu with something hopefully that's gonna taste better. I also replaced this, I had an unknown Elk Creek, hopefully you remember seeing that, and now I'm replacing it with some of our fancy plants from the Puerto Rico. This one is Capri Sun. So some of these newer hybrids from Puerto Rico, it's actually got, oh look, it got a little bit of damage here in the cold, which is good to know, but the plant's doing fine. And to be fair, I did just plant this plant here in December. So I transplanted this in December, and you can see I'm not protecting them. I was able to get the roots in there really carefully and then I did wrap it like you can see here. I wrap whenever I transplant plants, I'll wrap them up with burlap for a few weeks and then I'll take it off. So even this plant has been replaced. This was Edgar, a red flesh variety that just tastes okay and I replaced it with Pipes Red. So you can see here, it's kind of like the Game of Thrones here, I guess, in a sense to where if they don't make the cut, they get removed. So we're going to continue on our mission and quest to find the very best varieties for growers to enjoy, and in my opinion, the best tasting ones, and we'll get rid of the ones that are not. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed our grand tour. This is part three. Hopefully you saw the other two parts. Have yourself a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care. Music